Today's video has been sponsored by our partners at The Sojourn, because you can now listen to the first three episodes of this critically acclaimed audio drama for free for the rest of October over on their YouTube channel. Join the crew of the Guinevere as they set out to explore the unknown stars of CDC 41 Gamma in this fully cast, high production value audio experience. If you enjoy it and want more, then you can get the rest of Season 1 and the first volume of Season 2 on many platforms including Nebula, Spotify, Apple Books and many more. You can also buy or rent directly through the website or pledge on their Patreon, which also has extra bonus content at higher tiers. Check out the first three episodes for The Sojourn over on their YouTube channel linked in the description and pinned comments below. Available for the rest of October. Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hujuana and today we're looking at radiation weapons. Now, everyone knows that long-term radiation exposure is bad for you. It can cause cancer, sterility and other health issues that can be passed down through generations. We covered in the Nuclear Rockets video that it's also bad for spaceships, but long-term exposure isn't the sort of weapons I mean. Luckily or unluckily, increasing the radiation dose high enough can lead to death within hours, minutes or seconds. From skin burns to radiation points, poisoning, damage is done directly to the cells of the body. The higher the dose and the deeper it penetrates, the worse things are. It also impacts electronics. If one charged particle hits electronics, it can bump a lot of electrons out of the way. This can easily mess with semiconductors that make up the bulk of our complex electronics, causing bugs, breaking programs, wiping out data, or even permanent physical changes to the structure. Radiation-hardened electronics like those found in many spacecraft are somewhat protected against this issue, though I don't know how good such hardening would be at protecting from a dedicated radiation-based attack. But what's really scary about radiation is that it's totally invisible and entirely undetectable to us without the use of sensors. It's a silent, invisible killer that can reach through walls or cause effects that can linger for centuries. Coupled with the terrible way it causes damage, this means that weapons using radiation certainly come under the cruel and unusual. So let's have a look-see at what fiction has done with such awful weaponry, starting with the most obvious thing, the nuclear bomb. I've covered these in detail in a previous video, so this is going to be the quick version. Yes, nukes have radiation, and yes, you can dial them to deal mostly radiation damage, as is the case with neutron bombs. But there is also nuclear fallout, which is a bit of a side effect, though you can make a dirty bomb designed solely to spread radioactive material. Typical nuclear fallout consists of leftover materials from the bomb, but if it was detonated close to the surface, it also kicks up the ground or water and irradiates it as it gets lofted into the atmosphere to fall back down later. And this is what the Fallout franchise is named after. The Bethesda side of the setting has the lingering effects of radiation lasting for hundreds of years, rendering vast areas devoid of most life, or mutating it. And naturally, the games let you play with your own mini-nuke weapons, or even detonate the occasional big one, but the radiation from those is a side effect of the big kaboom. Luckily, there are also actual radiation weapons in the form of the Gamma Gun and its variants. These fire mostly radiation damage, which rather than dealing damage directly, it reduces maximum health. It's a pretty interesting way to do things, and is certainly very flavourful since they're these ramshackle hand-built things used by nutty cultists. Fallout 76 also added the Radium Rifle, which presumably dopes the regular bullets it fires with radium, as if being shot wasn't bad enough already. All this talk of gamma guns and radium weapons has probably perked up the ears of any Adeptus Mechanicus fans out there. The former and various other radiation weapons directly emit beams of ionising radiation, but are rare to see compared to the latter, which is a very common weapon type used by Skitarii. These radium guns come in a wide variety of handheld forms that slowly kill their wielders due to long-term exposure, and are even capable of turning the battlefield itself into a radioactive wasteland with concentrated fire. Which is also, kind of, what the Covenant do when glassing planets. Though I'm not sure why their plasma-based weapons do that when they're supposed to be using heat directly to obliterate or excavate planetary surfaces. It feels like the reference to the real vitrified sand created by nuclear explosions got a bit too literal, which isn't helped by the ludicrous value Cat says in Halo Reach which would have meant everyone and everything would be very, very dead. 
Beyond the big stuff, the Covenant also make use of weapons which have a radioactive payload. Obviously, there's the fuel rod guns, which fire radioactive incendiary gel rather than fuel rods, but there's also the carbine, which surprised me because I thought that thing fired a laser or something and not a literal physical bullet. Warframe can technically make any weapon use radiation damage through its mod system, and there's plenty of weapons that have it as their default damage type, but that's a bit broad. There are a handful of weapons that explicitly call out being radioactive in their descriptions, like the Arca Plasmor, Mutalist Quanta, and of course Corvex, the nuclear reactor frame, and his special heavy gun. And no, the new core doesn't count, despite its name it fires a beam of microwaves. While on Warframe, I have to talk about the weird bonus effect that radiation damage can trigger. Why is it a friendly fire and confusion thing? What's that got to do with radiation? It should probably be using what is currently the magnetic damage status effect, which messes with shields. Remember what I said about radiation damaging electronics? Borderlands 3 does its radiation effect a lot better. It's another damage over time thing, along with acid, fire and electricity, but it can spread to other nearby enemies and has a very satisfying sound effect when it kills them. And now for a another real-world option for a radiation weapon, the particle beam. These show up in sci-fi a decent amount, even if they're not really called that in the setting such as Star Trek's phasers. The thing is though, they're usually not that much different to laser beams, and to be fair, that is one way that real particle beams do damage. Using big heavy atoms like gold or uranium won't penetrate far into the target, but that just means the beam is very good at transferring its energy to the target, eroding away like a laser does. I'm not sure if spraying something down with uranium like that actually causes any radiation damage though, but what does is using light atoms or even just protons or electrons. These can all penetrate far deeper or even through a target and cause a big spray of something called breaking radiation as they slow down. So you can wave a particle beam over something and basically sterilize the inside of it while frying its electronics. This is also a fun way to get a real ion cannon from Star Wars that also happens to melt people. While we're here on particle beams and radiation weapons, I think they'd be a neat addition to Helldivers too. There's already fire, gas, lasers and lightning, so a whole radiation themed war bond is a logical next step, and such weapons would be an easy fit for a setting that has warp drives and shield tech. I don't know what weapons it would be specifically, maybe a cool shoulder mounted thing like the heftier lasers, but I'm not really sure how to differentiate a particle beam from a laser beam. Leaving behind patches of fallout could be a thing, but there's already other damage over time area effect weapons, so that feels a bit redundant. Something a bit newer and spicier could be to take that confusion effect that gas has had since the rework, but apply that only to bots when damaged. Get in a bit of that electronics interfering effect, and do that Warframe suggestion for when the Illuminate eventually get added with their shields. In the end, that Helldiver suggestion shows that I want more of this weapon archetype. There's exploitable bonus effects and a built-in understanding that radiation is a deadly, terrible thing. Sci-fi has plenty of horrible, painful weapons, so let's have more of this one. You can support Space Talk by joining our Patreon, where you can get our frigate and space fighter design reference books. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters, and thank you for watching.